guys, Angie B here, and this vlog has been a pain in my ass. This is the fifth time I'm trying it. I'm taking Anna's advice and splitting it into two parts. This had better fucking work. Okay, today's vlog is going to be a very big bone of contention on my list. It's about a very thorny subject, especially in the Doctor Who verse. RTD versus Moffat, my opinions and thoughts on both. RTD, Russell T. Davies, is the guy that brought Doctor Who back in 2005. Without Russell T. Davies, we wouldn't have the Doctor Who we now know and love. Who knows if Doctor Who would have ever even come back from limbo. I mean, chances are it might never have come back, or it would have been several more years, or it would have been vastly different. But the Doctor Who we have and love today is thanks to Russell T. Davies. Russell T. Davies also created the British version of Queer as Folk, which is fantastic. And he also brought about shows like Torchwood, which is the spinoff of Doctor Who. Now... I do have to give credit where credit is due. Russell T. Davies is a good writer, and he did bring about a lot of awesome things. I mean, I really like Russell T. Davies' writing in Season 1 and 2 of Doctor Who. He wrote half of Season 1. I mean, like, seven of the episodes he wrote. He, uh, you know, gave us characters like Rose, like 9, like 10. I mean, we wouldn't have the 9 and 10 and Rose that we love if it wasn't for Russell T. Davies. He also had a big hand in creating Captain Jack, who's amazing. Uh, I give him a lot of credit because he's very, you know, big on writing bisexual and gay relationships in his shows, which is something that always needs to have an equal amount of treatment in TV. Um, he wrote Doomsday, which is one of the best episodes of television ever written, ever, period. If you've never watched Doctor Who and you've never seen Doomsday, you don't understand what you're missing. Doomsday is one of the most perfect episodes of television I've ever seen. I mean, it's got every sort of emotion you can think of in it. Some of the best acting that David Tennant or Billy Piper have ever done in their lives. Um, beautiful music, beautiful, bittersweet, poignant ending. It was just a stellar way to write Rose off of the show and, you know, to write the finale for season two. And it was just beautiful. I've seen that episode 25 times at least, and every time I still cry. It's been... You know, three years since Doomsday came out, and I still cry every time. It's a really good piece of, of television. Um, I also give Russell T. Davies credit because, I mean, he he made Doctor Who, you know, fun and bouncy and yet also dark, you know, just the way Doctor Who should be. But I have a lot of issues with Russell T. Davies, especially issues that have developed especially in the past year or so. Um, in particular with Torchwood, Children of Earth. Because I feel like the way Russell T. Davies has been treating his fan base has been deplorable. I'm sorry, but I'm not okay with the way that he's been treating his fans. It really, really pisses me off. After Children of Earth came out and the finale aired and, you know, all the fans were up in arms, a lot of them were really angry, a lot of them were upset, a lot of them felt betrayed, you know, whatever... And they kept asking Russell, you know, what was his reasoning behind it. Russell got very high and mighty. He got very, well, I'm the boss, I know what's best, I wrote what I wanted, and, you know, you guys should all suck it up. That was the sort of attitude he had in a lot of his interviews. And it really, really, really pissed me off. He was saying things like, if you don't like the direction I took Torchwood, then, you know, go watch Supernatural. And he was basically equating himself uh, as, like, the British Joss Whedon. And that's not all right with me, Russell T. Davies. I'm sorry. But I've been a Joss Whedon fangirl for at least half of my life. I mean, I started watching Buffy before I was even in high school. And Joss Whedon is a fantastic writer. And it's because he brings a great balance to his shows. There's darkness, but there's also a lot of goofy lightheartedness. And his characters are extremely three-dimensional. They have a lot of flaws, but they also have a lot of good qualities to them. Even the bad guys have something that's interesting or intriguing or good about them. And he's really, really good at character development. And I'm sorry, but Russell T. Davies is not like Joss Whedon. He does have a lot of really solid episodes. He's created a lot of really interesting characters. He's done a lot of really good television. But... He hasn't maintained the right sort of balance, and he hasn't been consistent in the quality of his writing the way that Joss Whedon is. I mean, the characterization of most of the characters in Torchwood has been extremely scattershot. I mean, characters hardly remained consistent throughout seasons one and two. 
I mean, when uh, granted, a lot of that can't be blamed on Russell because, I mean, he wasn't being a head writer for most of that. But he can't claim that, you know, Torchwood is amazing and fantastic and solid and everything and that, you know, his writing of it was was wonderful when it's not always. I mean, he's very hit or miss with his shows. And it just, the way that he was treating his fan base, he was, like, talking down to us. He was being very... I don't know, dismissive of what the fans were saying and how the fans were reacting. And he just had this attitude of, well, I'm an awesome writer, and I wrote what I felt needed to be written, and, you know, you guys all need to suck it up. That's not the right thing to do. I'm sorry, but it really pissed me off the way that he was acting in interviews. And it's just like, I felt like he had lost touch with his fan base, and that he had just kind of assumed this high and mighty stance, and it just didn't sit right with me made me really angry, really. And then, I mean, Doomsday is a fantastic piece of television. As I said, it's one of my favorite episodes of television ever, of any television show, not even just Doctor Who, any television show. It's beautiful. And then Russell fucked it up with se with season four's finale, Journey's End. He fucked up Doomsday, and it really pissed me off. He brought Rose back. And granted, I really wanted Rose to come back, because I love Rose, and I love Billy Piper, and I wanted to see Rose and Ten interacting again. I wanted the chance for some more hugging and some hand-holding and maybe even some kissing. I, you know, I really wanted Rose to come back. But at the same time, I knew that they weren't going to be able to write Rose off the way that they wrote, off, wrote her off in Doomsday. That whatever happened at the end of Season 4, it would not be as good as Doomsday. I was really pissed off when what they did at the end of Season 4, what Russell did at the end of Season 4, basically fucked up Doomsday itself. Went back to Bad Wolf Bay, basically reenacted the whole goodbye scene at Doomsday, but then he has to give Rose this sort of, like, you know, 10 Mach 2 runner-up prize, and it just didn't sit right with me, because all of Season 4's finale just felt so much like he was trying to do fan service, but at the cost of a solid plot and really good writing. I liked seeing all the companions together. I liked seeing Rose and the Doctor back together again. But I felt like it just wasn't a solid finale. It wasn't the right sort of finale. And especially because it just... It kind of shunted Donna off to the side and made her more of a footnote at the very end of the episode with what happened to Donna. And I felt like she didn't get the right sort of focus and screen time that she should have gotten because she was the full season four companion. And because uh, RTD had to stick all of this Rose stuff in there, I felt like it really lessened the impact of what happened to Donna. And the whole thing with Rose and 10 Mach 2, or Handy, or 10 2, or whatever you want to call him, it still kind of pisses me off. Because even though he may look and sound just like her doctor, even though he might have all the memories and really love her the way that the doctor does, Rose has to know that he's not really her doctor. He's not. He's just like a runner-up prize. And the Doctor still didn't get to be with Rose, and he still has to suffer the pain of knowing that she's off with another man. And it, it just, it made me very upset, because it felt like Russell wrote that in as if to be like, Okay, fangirls, you wanted Rose and the Doctor together, here you go, now Rose and the Doctor are together. But they're not really! It's a sham! It just, it just really made me angry. And I can't even really fully put into words why it made me angry, it just didn't sit right with me. It just felt unfair to me. So, I have to admit, I give RTD a lot of credit for everything he's done. He brought Doctor Who back. He gave us some awesome characters. Seasons 1 and 2 are stellar. But I felt like the whole tone of the show shifted at the end of Season 2. It, begot, it just got more dark, and it just felt heavier and more angsty. And the doc Doctor Who is a very deep, heavy show. I mean, there's genocide, there's imprisonment, there's slavery. There's a lot of really heavy issues that it tackles. But seasons one and two felt like there was always that undercurrent of hope. There was always a positive energy, love, hap you know, happiness, laughter running through the seasons. And then when Rose left, it felt like the show was kind of like off balance. Like, you know, I try really hard to like Martha. I know Megan, I know Natalia, you really like Martha. But I just, I can't get behind Martha. I like the idea of her, I like aspects of her, but I could never really get behind Martha. And even though Donna was amazing and I love Donna, I go back and I look at seasons three and seasons four... And I really, there's not a lot of episodes that I really love to rewatch on a regular basis. I love Blink. I love the three-part finale of season three because you got J Jack back and Sir Derek Jacobi and Johnson as the master. I like Shakespeare Code, okay. I like some of the episodes in season four, like Unicorn and the Wasp, because it's goofy. 
but for the most part, seasons three and four just felt a lot heavier and a lot angstier, and I didn't really like the tone that it was taking. So, that kind of leads in to why I am totally Team Moffat. That's going to be the second half, half of this vlog, because I know I'm not going to be able to fit it in in under ten minutes. So stick to, stay tuned for the next part of this vlog. I'm really sorry if I've pissed some RTD hardcore fans, you know, out already over this, but stay tuned. See you in a second.